Good morning, lovely viewers. It's another exciting Saturday morning on The Rendezvous Show. It's been an exciting five weeks so far, and I hope that you're enjoying the ride as much as I am. So, I'm not here alone, as usual. I'm here with my lovely co-host, Kunedu. Hi, Jamila. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Looking lovely, as usual. You thank know. you. You look great. I love your hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you're beaming. What's up? Um, it's been a great week coming mm -hmm. down from Monday to now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we have life, I think all we can say is to um, thank God for the gift of life and then move on. So I believe um, I'm excited because mm -hmm. we are coming uh, to our viewers. We are coming to the lovely people of Ghana, bringing uh, two hours of exciting moments, sharing with them yes. in the few hours of the day, you know. So I can't afford <laughs> but to be happy. So yes. I'm looking forward to these two hours yes. sharing yeah. with the public, yeah. you know. Also yeah. because it's three days to Independence Day, the mm -hmm. 6th of March. So this, this month actually is the Wear Ghana month. So wear whatever you can to, you know, oh, portray yes. Ghana. Oh, yes. We are promoting yes. Ghana. Yes. So we are eating Ghana, we are wearing Ghana, and we are buying Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I believe if you are out there too, you're joining us in this whole thing. And then, you know, um, they've started with a trade fair. Yeah. yeah. The Ghana International Trade Fair. It, yes. it has really, um, it started, uh, I think, a few days back. Mm -hmm. And then it's a seven-day um, program mm -hmm. or let's say activity. Yeah. So every day they are there. We have people from all over, not just Ghana. That's why it's international. So all I was walks. there. I was there the first day mm -hmm. when, when, when it, when it, it started. Uh, yeah. And then I, I saw a lot of stuff, goodies. You know, it's amazing to see the kind of things that we're able to make in this country. And also we, I, I, I met people who were showcasing their wares yes. from Benin, Togo, wow. and all those Exciting. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wish... Um, we could all pass by. I'm sure there's something somewhere that we could find to excite our day. Yeah. yeah. My fondest memory was when we were in primary school, mm -hmm. you know, and then they also were going on an excursion. So they put us all in a bus and they take us to the Trade Fair Center. It was so much <laughs> fun. You know, that's my fun. What did you ever go as a, as a no, job? No, you know, I wasn't in Accra. Oh. I was always in Kumasi. Oh. And I think it's held in Accra. The yes. capital city, you know. But I hope, I hope, I hope in future some of these things can be organized regionally, you know. So um, today we are coming your way looking at issues with the creative arts industry. Mm -hmm. We'll be bringing you all that is happening if our minister is really doing Pushing. her best to promote the industry mm -hmm. or not, or if she's focusing on the tourism aspect more than the the, the art or the creative art. We will, we will be discussing all that. Not only, I think there are and more. And then later on, yeah. we have some business discussions mm -hmm. so on entrepreneurship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're starting a business or you're already in business and you need a few more tips, I think you should stay true. Sure. Um, and then you can get a few more tips um, on that segment. Yeah. Also, so, we have mm -hmm. coming into the studio um, on our up and close, up close and personal segment, uh, a very celebrated musician. So that's a secret. So. Do, do stay tuned. All right, you're welcome back. It's still Rendezvous coming to you live from Atenka TV. Our first topic for this morning, we're looking at implementing the film act and other creative art industry matters. We're going to bring you all the things you need to know about what is happening in our creative art industry. And to help me discuss these issues is Ken Fiate. He is actually... Um, actor, I'm sure a lot of us know him. His, his real name is Ken Fiat, in case you don't know, and he is a film producer and a director. Ken, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Um, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to be on the show. Yeah, we're yeah. also pleased to have you. You're looking good. I like your um, African wear. I guess this is made in Ghana, right? Yes, sure. I, I do it all the time. Great, yes. great. I don't Thank want you, you to give me a ticket. I would have told you where <laughs> I get it from. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> great having you once again. You. So, um, well, viewers, before we even start, let me give you our WhatsApp line. You can test us on 050-1611823. 050-1611823. So you can follow us and also um, test out whatever you have to contribute to it. Um, in between the show, we'll also give you the, uh, the call-in line so that you can also contribute live on the show. You can also check us live on Facebook on Atenka TV Ghana. If you go there right now, you see everything for yourself in case you don't have a TV set wherever you are. So now back to you, Ken. Yeah. 
We are looking at um, the creative art industry. You are there right now. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of issues coming up mm -hmm. with uh, people not patronizing uh, locally produced movies. Mm -hmm. It has been a big issue coming out all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's something, something you, producers, directors, and then you know all those people involved mm -hmm. are actually not doing? Um, uh, it's, it's a very... Um Hydra-headed question you're asking this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that there can't be quality films um, or creative art products churned out from this country. Um, it's just that we, we as practitioners feel that um, the nation has not, I, 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 when I say the nation, I'm talking about governance, hasn't taken the creative arts that seriously. Mm -hmm. And so the requisite structures that need to be put in place mm -hmm. for us as um, industry stakeholders to um, carry out our craft mm -hmm. has not been there. Um, some will argue about it, but at least people have proven that they can produce very good mm -hmm. um, um, movies in, in, in this country. Um, I've been on set with Jamila, and uh, uh, we can talk about what she's, she's mm -hmm. done in terms okay. of quality and all okay. that. There's Kofi Asamoah, okay. who is doing great with his movies and his okay. series on TV. There's Peter Sedufia, um, producer of KTK. KTK happened to have been shown even on airlines mm -hmm. um, that fly in and out of the nation. So okay. that shows that um, given the right climate and the right structure, we would be able as um, filmmakers in this country to produce quality movies Great. That, that, that will place us where we have to be. Great. But the bottom line is lack of commitment towards our, okay. our sector. Okay, great. So. Um, Looking at the structures, getting the right structures to work on, like you mentioned, yeah. how is the state, or what is the state of the Film Act at this moment? Um, I'm sure that um, m maybe what they wanted to do was just to satisfy our cry for a film law. Mm -hmm. And so they just passed it, and it's there. And uh, it's, this is just about 15 months since it got the presidential assent. It was passed in six, uh, on 16th December 2016. 16, yeah. And uh, from that time till now, it's just been lying. I'm sure um, as Ghanaians, we would want it to lie on the shelves and mm -hmm. collect some dust before we can go back and, and spend money to redust it and, and consider it again. Um, it took almost two decades for this bill um, to go through various stages to become what it is today. Um, we, we are in this country and we have seen certain um, establishment um, set up quickly. Um, certain bills have just had, uh, were dragged through parliament as if they needed to be passed that very instant and they were passed. Mm -hmm. um, but for us in this industry, what is, is it like? Now we have the law. For us, as I, I speak for Ghana Actors Guild, I am presidential spokesperson and I happen to be head of the technical committee of the Ghana Actors Guild. Way back, um, our president, um, God rest his soul, uh, the late Neil Dwey Mensah, um, together with, uh, with his executive thought it right that they should do an advocacy to ask that a bill be turned into law. So it's not something that we are starting now. Mm -hmm. It's something that we believe that this is even a lesson to governance or to government or political parties that there should be a continuance in anything that, that we do, provided it is good and it will inure to the benefit of, of the people. And so um, once um, Samuel Fishian, who is the current president, took office, he realized that, yes, there's this law. And so there's a need for us to run another advocacy mm -hmm. for us to ask that we respect what the law is saying. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing basically is we're running an advocacy asking for the full operationalization of oh, the law, law as okay. in the Film Act, the Act 935. Okay. And so um, what we did is that because one thing they easily say, when I say they, I'm referring to the authorities okay. that, that be, the duty bearers, okay. as in our sector minister and, and, and even the presidency, mm -hmm. because that's where we are driving our advocacy at. Um, what they say is that we as industry stakeholders are not united. Okay. It used to be like that to some extent. But on this advocacy, though it is spearheaded by the Ghana Actors Guild. What does it mean if he says you are not united? Uh, because producers were speaking a different language, okay. actors were speaking differently, okay. directors speaking differently, okay. you understand. So um, it felt like m more like selfish interest being the song of the mm -hmm. day. But for now, on this advocacy, though we are spearheading it as Ghana Actors Guild, 
We have FIPAC, which is the Producers Association of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have FICAC, the film crew. We have Ghana Academy of Film and Television Arts. We have the marketers and distributors. So we have all the stakeholders in the industry coming together to say that give us the, 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 what is, is written in law. Mm -hmm. So we are not asking for anything out of the deep blue seas. Okay. We are just asking that that document that you thought it right, that went through parliament and was passed, should be respected. Key amongst it is that the first point, in, when you look at the Act 935 as it is, it says that there is established a national film authority. Mm -hmm. So once it gets the assent, there is established a national film authority. Mm -hmm. So as we speak here, as per law, there is established a national film authority. Mm -hmm. But where is it? So we are saying that give us that national film authority. Don't, don't worry your head about any other thing. Mm -hmm. Just give us the authority. Because we feel that even though the act or the law might not be the best of laws across the world, mm -hmm. it is better to have something to mm -hmm. work with, mm -hmm. test it, and then we can call for amendments of whatever is stipulated in there, okay. rather than to operate in the vacuum. Okay. I attended a program organized by the uh, Minister, uh, Minister for uh, Tourism, Tourism Cre yeah. and Creative Art, uh, Catherine Afeku. Yeah. And then um, it, it brought together all the stakeholders mm. and all the other um, agencies that are in charge or within her sector. Mm. And I, I heard from, from, from them that it has to be re-implemented or whatever it is because uh, it looks like it's been there for so many years. Mm. Now they've seen there the needs to be some changes. Mm. Now, um, even since it was implemented earlier, you haven't seen any much use. Um, now, do you think, mm -hmm. do you think mm -hmm. there's, there's really a need for them to um, do something about it, implement new thing before they can go ahead the issue is this. If she says something has been implemented, what has been Im implemented mm -hmm. in the past? And if she says it has to be done again, again. what has been done again? Mm -hmm. Because after it had, this act had a presidential accent, nothing has been done yeah. as regards setting up of a film authority mm -hmm. that we believe that when it is respected will bring together the film development fund and, and all other things that will help us. There has been nothing done, done. nothing done. As filmmakers, um, that is what we know. Now, what we know about is the setting up of a Creative Arts Council, okay. which is a bigger body. Okay. Film fits inside the Creative Arts mm -hmm. Council. That is not a bad idea, provided we do it the right way. Mm -hmm. For some of us, we are saying that what has the law backing it has not been implemented. And so if you tell me as a filmmaker to go under the Creative Arts Council, which is a bigger body, mm -hmm. And, and wait for a bill to be passed, passed. into law for yeah. the legal um, requisition of such, uh, such a body to be put together. Whereas mm -hmm. that document that is already passed is there mm -hmm. and you seem not to be committed to it, yeah. then how do I trust you? It, it, it is said in Akan, so if you are telling me of a creative arts council, fine, I am ready to commit myself to it. But give me that little that the law says. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, as we speak right now, anybody listening will think that I have a problem with the sector minister. But I don't. I have a problem with the structures as they are. And so we want the structures to be respected and put in place. You understand? Because if there is set the National Film Authority, it is stipulated in there that there is a governing body. This governing body has a representation from government and it has a representation from the various stakeholders in the industry. And this would run, this board is the board that runs the National Film Authority. So now if I sit here as a filmmaker and I have a problem with, with filmmaking in the nation, I will address my concerns at the National Film Authority. Mm -hmm. So for us on this advocacy, what we're basically saying is that even though we have um, um, the feeling that there's lack of commitment from our duty bearers, that is the sector minister, to respecting what the law says, we feel that this is an opportunity for us to absolve her of all accusations that will come, all attacks that will come, so that our own people will run our National Film Authority. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, then you don't have any beef. Uh, uh, with, with us. You can rather hold us on. Okay, great. Well, if you just tune in, you're watching Rendezvous coming to you from Atsenka TV. And then I have with me Ken Fiati.
Fiate. Yes. yes, he is an actor. I'm sure a lot of us know him. And then he is a film producer and a director as well. And tonight we are discussing implementing the Film Act and other creative art matters. So if you watched earlier, he has been um, telling us more about the Film Act. Now, if you want to... Um, Join us on, on Facebook. You can just uh, join us on Atinka TV Ghana and then you will get everything for yourself. The WhatsApp line is also 050-1611823. All right, Ken. Yeah. So um, what exactly have you, I mean, the stakeholders you mentioned, been doing? I know you are already advocating, yeah. but do you have constant interaction yeah. with the sector minister yes, about we, your we, plight? We have had the opportunity to sit down with her okay. and uh, talk about our sector. Um, I'm sure that if you were at the meet the press, you would realize that what went on there was 95% tourism. Mm -hmm. For us, we feel that the arts and cultures is not being taken seriously in this country. Mm. If you have a whole meet the press that has about 95% talking about tourism, whereas arts and culture can feed tourism or is the best way of feeding the tourism sector, then there's a problem. We realize that her commitment is towards setting up the Creative Arts Council. Like I said initially, we don't have a problem with that. Okay, I don't mean to cut you, That's but then okay. right there, um, I know we all see her very energetic mm. and seems to really coming up with great initiatives, mm. which to me is for both. Mm. But like, if you if you think it's for mm. the tourism, fine. But then um, we we heard about the TV station mm. that she's okay. trying to set up, or she mm. had already set up the in the TV. name of. Mm. Okay, it's tourism, it's TV, tourism TV, but there's the word tourism there. But mm. it's actually the TV is supposed to uh, help promote Ghanaian movies. You, you, Don't you, you think see, it's something? You see. I don't want to mention certain applications that are being called TV uh, stations for certain okay. um, things. But there's tourism TV. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of work that has been done in that regard. Okay. That's fine. But what is the use of tourism TV when the industry is suffering? Are we calling what we have currently an industry? <laughs> we, we dare not go there. Just recently, Saudi Arabia, noted for oil production, is committed, com committing so much, almost 64 million dollars into the, the, the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And they have set up an authority, General Entertainment Authority, to run the affairs of it. That is what we are calling for here. Mm -hmm. That for us, give us a National Film Authority. Stop telling us all the big rhetorics and the big f dreams and all that. Mm -hmm. Let's respect what we have. Let's put it in place and then let's test it. When we do, we can move forward as an industry. That's what basically we are saying. All but right. back to the question you were asking, for stakeholders, what we are doing is that, what we, what we started with is that we went to BUSAC, the Business Sector Advocacy Challenge, because we do not have the funds. We don't, we, we don't really get work to do, mm -hmm. let alone get money for what we do. So we went to BUSAC, which is big Business Sector Advocacy Challenge, for funding. We went with a proposal that this is what we want to do, because we believe that once the structures are put in place, we as industry stakeholders would also be able to do something for ourselves. So they granted us a fund for which we are using to run this advocacy. Mm -hmm. Now they have support from USAID, mm -hmm. the Danida, and the European yeah. Union. So I want to use this platform to say thanks to them mm -hmm. for the support they gave us. Now with that um, um, funding, what we're doing is that we have, we have three stages. The media campaign stage, where we have been talking over the past two weeks, we have been on radio and television talking about what our problems are. What we are doing with the media campaign stage is basically to sensitize the populace that this is a challenge that we have as a sector or as filmmakers in this country, so people come to better appreciate what we are discussing. And any time we talk, we encourage people to look, at, look for the Development and Classification Bill, uh, Law, um, Act 935, so they can also look at it for themselves. Mm -hmm. We are not lawyers, so there are lawyers in this country. Maybe when they read it, they'll better interpret it than we are doing. Then from that stage, we go to the stakeholder engagement um, stage, where all the stakeholders, the producers, the directors, actors, uh, marketers, distributors, all come together for a training for us to set up a technical committee to engage our, our duty bearers 
And, and so that the duty bearers engagement stage is the third and final stage. Where when we say duty bearers, we're talking about our sector ministry. That is the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture. And then we're talking about the Attorney General's Department. Uh, and then we're talking about the Ministry um, of Justice. And then the presidency, because the, the core mandate in this legal document is for the president to put in place the National Film Authority. Okay. Now, do you think that it would be appropriate if the sector is split? Like you have a minister taking care of tourism, the tourism aspect of it, which already you believe probably this minister is focusing on, and then another taking care of uh, the entertainment or the creative art industry. Do you mm. think that in a way would help? Look, just take a trip to the, the MUTAC the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, and check what desk is there for film. Mm. Go there and ask that you want to get a panelist on this show and see what will happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that I believe. We're talking about what is happening at the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Now, if you check a nation like America, I always ask this question anywhere I go. Which war has America won on the battlefield? They win their wars through the movies. When you go to India, the Bollywood contributes greatly to the GDP of the nation. Just next door, Nigeria, where now, even, even when you are auditioning for a role, they expect you to have a Nigerian accent to get a role in a Ghanaian movie. Just Nigeria. Check how much contribution that film gives to GDP. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, we feel that when we want to look at this, this art and culture issue, we cut across every area. One simple production brings together electricians, carpenters, set designers, um, 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 script writers, actors, directors, producers. So just, just, just calculate it. Right. So if I'm doing a short movie, let's say I'm doing even a five minute well done movie, I'm employing close to 60 people mm. on one production. So just imagine what this will do to the development of our nation in terms of creating jobs for people. Mm -hmm. So for us, we believe that once we cut across, because film is a trade commodity, and that, that can be discussed on, on a full show yeah, of sure. this nature. So we believe that if we had the choice, we would prefer there is a ministry of arts and culture. All oh, right. But what we have now is that we are part of tourism. Mm -hmm. So give us what we deserve. All right, so give us what you deserve. That's what you're advocating for. Welcome back. I still have with me Ken Fiate and we are continuing the show. Yeah. Now, before we went, you were speaking about how some countries like mm. India, mm. like Nigeria, mm. are really making great contributions to their GDP. Yeah. With, with the, with the uh, movies they are producing, mm. you know, and we, we, we all know it is them at the soft powers that are really selling mm. those countries mm. to the outside world. Sure. Now, will you attribute the fact that you don't have the requirement, what you need, but you don't, you're not getting from the sector minister as the reason you are not really progressing as a movie industry in the country? Yeah, just to quickly correct it, mm -hmm. we're not saying the sector minister, we're saying the government. Okay, the government. Yes, because um, yeah. um, this whole thing, would have to be put in place by the president. Okay. So what we're saying is that we're, we're petitioning mm -hmm. the, 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 the president. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing a red-armed um, red demonstration across the streets and crying, mm -hmm. we want to use the language that they better understand, okay. dialogue. Okay. Now, listen to me. I, I have a good story. Mm -hmm. I know of very brilliant directors. They are great actors and actresses in this nation. I don't have the funds for it but I have to make ends meet. I'll produce it the way I can with the funds I have. So for um, what this Film Act puts in place, the Act 935, what it puts in place is a film development fund. Mm -hmm. Something like what Xylophone is doing currently. So there is a fund. I apply into the fund. There are requirements. When I meet those requirements, I have funds to produce what I have to produce. And I engage or I employ a whole lot of people who would then pay their taxes. Mm. And so it goes to contribute to the, the, the national kitty. Mm. So if we do not take what we are doing seriously like other nations are, we would have brilliant know-hows in this nation, but we cannot put our craft to, to use. Okay. Now, before we continue, let me announce my phone lines. That's I'm fine. sure people want to. So uh, you can call in on 030 222 3126. 
030-222-3126. Ken, yeah. you, you spoke about funding. Mm. Probably if you have all the right uh, measures and the funds, mm. you can do better mm. than what you are doing. Will you encourage uh, private investors to come on board and you probably assist you if you are not getting from the government? Uh, what, would, would a private investor want to put money into something that doesn't have the right structures? Mm. That's another question we need to ask. If I am a private person and I want to put money into something, I also want to ensure that my money can be safeguarded. And so there should be the right legal framework for what I do. So in as much as we cry for private partnership in filmmaking, we need as a nation to take our act serious. Mm. You understand? That is the only way we can make it comfortable for people to come into what we are doing. What we have done so far is for us privately to look for funding to produce what we produce. Mm. And that is why our industry is going down. Just look at our cinemas that used to be around. Those times we used to say twerk and we used to say six. And for, for, for those were re reference to movies that were shown at the rec cinemas, the operas and co. What, what, where are they? What are they being used for? And so if I own the rec cinema and I cannot um, um, safeguard some income from the facility as a theater or as a film showing, or as a cinema, I would rather give it out to any individual, be it a pastor or be it a private business person who can run the place and give me some money. Okay. And so we need, we need to be serious as a nation when it comes to this. That's the only way we can draw private partnership. Okay, moving gradually to other matters. Interestingly, some times back, mm. we all know how, um, uh, do I even call them movies or mm. maybe just play, like cantata mm. and all those uh, things that nobody wants to miss. Mm. They were really making waves in the mm. country. Mm. That's all we had at that time. Mm. And I can say everybody on Sunday, Sunday, Evenings, yeah. everybody wants to Rushing go and to watch. Yeah. So, so what actually went wrong? You because see, now we have a lot, but we are still not watching. Right, we go, yeah. right after independence, the, the nation was serious with the creative arts. Okay. Because even Osajifu was traveling with performance. Okay. Uh, Bella, good morning. Morning. All right. So um, how are you doing this morning? How is Kumasi? Kumasi is good. Great. What do you have to say? Um, I, I wanted to say, like, I support um, Ken. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> At least he's made his point. Mm. He's, he's, he's in support of what you are saying. He supports which, which, what we are advocating for. What we are for. advocating <laughs> for. Okay. Yes, like I was saying, mm -hmm. um, Kwame Nkrumah used to travel with performers. At mm -hmm. least I know about Solomon Sampa, God rest his soul, who used to travel with the president because he realizes that it was one way to relax from a tough day and then another way to sell your nation, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, right after independence, sorry, we were serious with f the arts. Um, um, I asked myself, there, there is the ISD, Information Services Department, right opposite where we have the, the tourism center mm -hmm. around uh, the Flagstaff House. Next to it. All right, Ken, Ifia is on the line. <laughs> Good morning, Ifia. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Ifia, what do you have to say? Um, I think I support him because the government is not paying much attention to the movie industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ifia, are, are you an actress? Okay, it looks like we've lost Ifia too. Yes. But uh, once again, she's also made her point. Yes. The government is not, is not supporting. Yes. Oh, so so way ahead. back, like I was referring to, there was the Information Services Department, then you go to what we have now as TV3 used mm -hmm. to be the Ghana National Film, um, Ghana Film, so I've forgotten the okay. rest, in something company. Okay. And then next to it was the GBC. That yeah. whole expanse of land was supposed to be like uh, an entertainment center or a film, like let's say film village or mm -hmm. film center. Now, and there used to be funding. Okay. It looks like I'm having <laughs> Kumasi people this morning. Michael, good morning. Morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. How is Kumasi? How Kumasi? Great, thank you so much for watching. What do you have to say? Well, I think um, with our movie industry, I mean, for United States to be United States, it was, it was true, I mean, movies and music and everything. So, I mean, our government needs to focus on movies and, um, and our music industry. Mm. I think um, that can be um, our, our economy too. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so that, that whole expanse was like that. But like, my main point is that for us to be able 
to have had certain movies in the past. Mm. These were not filmmakers who had funds. These were filmmakers who had access to funding. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Even in the US and co, when you watch the blockbusters, you see movies produced by two, three production houses. Mm -hmm. So they come together and then they churn out their movies. Mm -hmm. So if we have funding and we realize that we don't have strong stories, we can always build our strong stories. Mm -hmm. I remember way back in school, I wanted to do something on something historic. I don't want to be very specific mm -hmm. about it because it hurts me. But just imagine if you want to do something about Yasantua or do something on the Golden Stool and right. you don't have materials. <laughs> All right, so can we continue? Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How is the North? It's very fine. Great, 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 great. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, Esther, um, I, I think I support what Mr. Ken is saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning. Okay. I'm fine. It's very fine. All right. Thank you so much for calling us. That means every, everywhere people are watching. She's calling no, you from see, the, the thing is, the thing is, we cannot joke with the issue mm -hmm. of the creative arts. Yeah. Because where we are sitting right now, we would not be sitting here if we don't have the creative arts. Yeah. I'm true. sitting in something designed by a creative mind. Mm -hmm. We're using devices cre designed by creative minds. Mm -hmm. We're wearing clothes. If you're saying wear Ghana, mm -hmm. what is the best way to wear Ghana? Yeah. So every facet of society, let's just say the creative arts um, industry decides to take a break. Okay. What will happen? Mm -hmm. Now, I can't let you go without mm, speaking about the almighty influx of telenovelas. <laughs> in a country which has taken over <laughs> your work. You, you know why I'm laughing? Uh -huh, tell me. The issue is, for me, I believe that we don't really need them. Mm. But the question is, if we take them off, what are we showing? Mm. The, the issue is that it has become so unattractive for a producer to produce something. Because <laughs> you have a script. You have to pay money for the script. You have to go on set and film. You have to get places to film. Sometimes you need to pay people to use their facilities. Mm. So what it does is that it increases production cost. And so if I am coming to sell it even to a TV station, I'm expecting that even if I won't make profits, I should break even so I can go back and produce. Mm. So local content has become expensive. Now these foreign things that they bring, some of them are as old as 10 years. They have shown them in their countries. They have made all the monies. So what they are doing here is residual mm -hmm. income that they are making. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind how much they come and give it out to yeah. a TV station. So when they compare the two, they would quickly go for that foreign thing, yeah. which, which does not help our national mm -hmm. psyche. I was, I was speaking somewhere, and I said that when we take our creative as serious, we can keep a lot of the menace we are having in society. All right. In times past, we would easily say that maybe Obiatu Obedro, before somebody would jump off a building and kill him or herself. It was difficult for us to see a lady drink poison because the boyfriend had disappointed him. But we are watching so much of foreign stuff that it is becoming part of our national psyche. Mm. The arts, the arts determine how a nation behaves. Mm. And so that, that is the negative effect these things are having on us. But okay. the first thing is, we don't have the right structures. Mm. We don't have money to produce okay. things. So when we peel them off the televisions, okay. what are we going to do? All right. Now, my last question briefly. The people in the act, those who are doing it, your well-being, there are a lot of times we don't hear good news mm. at the end, mm. how some of you end mm. up. Mm. Do you have funds? I mean, the Actors Guild, do you mm. have funds that takes care mm. of, of, of these people? The current, the current administration um, has a welfare, national welfare officer, Kausum Sinari Bafo, mm -hmm. and God bless her. Because the type of thing she's put in place, I'm sure if you followed the news, you'd realize that there was a lot of visitation to the old in, uh, uh, in the industry. Tokens were given mm. out to them. Some are sick. I'm saying, ah, because currently yeah, are there are some sick. that are sick that yeah. we have visited over the past week. Okay. What we have not been able to do is that when you're giving poultry sums, you cannot make too much noise about okay. it. So um, there's a structure in place to ensure that these people are well taken care of. But if Arabas Tamp died in a kiosk, mm -hmm. Arabas Tamp died in a kiosk, Mac Jordan Amate, I, I've not spoken to him about this, 
but he is in a situation now that he needs help. I'm sure you read the news items where he was appealing for, for his leg that has been amputated yeah. to get the fiber leg. Yeah. There, 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 there are a lot of them. Look, look at um, William Addo, Apache, legendary actor. He needed help to have an eye operation. Yeah. Super Odi died. His one week was observed just yeah. last, yeah. Or just yesterday. yesterday. Look at how. Yeah. So yeah. the issue is that we believe okay. that when the film authority is set in place, issues of intellectual property, copyright issues and okay. all that, royalties and all that, okay. will be there for people who have worked in their youth to enjoy, even if okay. when they grow up they cannot be churning okay. out the stuff that they, they, they okay. have. All right. Thank you so much, Ken, You're for welcome. joining us this morning. And thank you. So we wrap up with Ken on implementing the Film Act and other um, creative art industries.